really good way to start any of your practices or even your day is to do a ritual of some sort and some people quite like to use Pai Santo or White Sage to help either clear energies within the space or to hopefully bring in any positive energies. So feel free to do whatever it is that works for you to make your space for this session as open, as relaxed and as calm as possible. Hi, my name is Chris and I'm a psychotherapist, yoga instructor and wellness retreat owner. We are in our wellness studio here at Rolling Hills Retreat and today's session is a yin session. So for those of you who haven't done yin before, it's quite different to maybe the Hatha or Vinyasa flow that you may have done in the past. Yin is very much about slowing down. It's about going to your edge in what we call the shapes rather than the poses, but then backing off a little bit. And we're going to be holding each pose for between three to five minutes. And the idea is, is that it strengthens and lengthens the connective tissues inside the body. It's a really great way to help try and balance out the energies within our minds and our bodies. And it's a very calming practice. In saying that, yin can bring stuff up for people. And if that does come up for you, just try your best to allow it to come in. A lot of the time we try to fight stuff and try to forget about it and try to push it to the side, but yin is actually a really beautiful practice to go inwards and go deep and to allow those feelings to come in. Because if we don't allow them to come in, then we can't work with them. We can't then aim to let them go and not have the impact that they have on us. So I really encourage you today to allow yourself to feel whatever comes up. If at any point it gets too much, please feel free to come out, come into child's pose, come into shavasana, and remember to talk things out with a professional or with a dear friend if things are coming up for you. If you'd like to follow us, we have an Instagram page at Rolling Hills Retreats, where there's other videos and mental health strategies, and also some photos and ideas of our retreat here if any of you would ever like to come visit. I've also got my psychotherapy website, which is sydneycouncillor.org as well. So please feel free to get in touch if you're looking for any sessions in person or online. Let's get started. So with our yin today, I really recommend that you have either a bolster or one or two pillows. It's also quite nice, <coughs> excuse me, at the end to have a blanket if you wish, if it's quite cold where you are. If you've got a block, amazing, but if not, um, a book is absolutely fine. And just get yourself nicely settled, maybe putting on a playlist, type in yin yoga on any of the various music platforms and you'll find some nice relaxing music. Okay, let's begin, let's close down your eyes. Inhale through the nose. And a sigh through the mouth. One more time. Inhale through the nose. And a sigh through the mouth. Bringing our breath to inhaling and exhaling through the nose. Starting to ground down in your space. yourself this time to try your best to not be thinking about the past or the future. Thinking only about what you're doing right here, right now. Know that you're doing something really good for your mind, body and soul. exercise that you do today, and that's fantastic. Focus. And we're going to bring our first shape into butterfly pose here. So we're bringing the soles of the feet together. And there's several different variations I'm going to show you here. So you might know the one which in other yoga practices, 
where you kind of you're really maybe pulling on your feet and your hands, but in the end we don't want to be doing that. We want to be able to come to the edge of our pillow of our shape, but then back off ever so slightly. So if you've got that pillow or that bolster, this is a really good time to have that. Maybe bringing it close towards you. You might, some of you might be able to reach your forehead down, palms facing up, or in front of you. Some of you might need to put a block to help rest that forehead on. So you do whatever works best for you. Get yourselves ready. And then we're going to aim to try not to move whilst we're in this pose. And we're just really focusing in on the breath. Inhale through the nose. And exhale through the nose. And the inhale helps us to connect to our emotions. Emotions in our minds, but also our emotions that are in our body. Sometimes these emotions, positive or negative, can get trapped. And we don't allow time to really allow our body to slow down in a mindful and conscious way. And sending breath to those parts of the body that need it the most. Have a check in with your body right now. Is there anywhere that is maybe feeling a little bit tender or tense or stressed or pain? If so, on your next inhale, try and send that breath that part of that body and as you exhale release and let it go let it relax if anxiety or depression or any other mental health issue is something that comes to visit you at times Know that you're not alone. Know that there are ways to help make it not feel as intense as it sometimes does. Know that you do have the power in you to control how long it stays with you. You can't always control when it comes to visit. But what we can control is how long it stays with us. So many people try and distract those feelings or push them to the side or bury them, don't talk about them. And whilst that can be beneficial sometimes in the short term, in the long term, all we're doing is putting off facing those fears, those anxieties, those worries, those experiences, that trauma. Sometimes when we're feeling ready, we're feeling mentally strong and prepared and we have the right support systems around us. Sometimes it's about letting it in. It's about facing. It's about being open to seeing yourself with those fears, with those experiences. To then give yourself the power that's within you to see it, to own it, and then to work with it to make it more positive for you. And 
some of the other videos that I've put on YouTube. There's a few different strategies there which can help with anxiety, depression, the things that you struggle with. Check out the Harvey Principle, the Momentum, and the 54321 Grounding Factor series. If you'd like to understand a little bit more about the strategies that could help. You want to feel with every exhale that you're falling a little bit closer to the ground. Hopefully nice and still, only moving maybe a millimetre at a time. Breathing in to the pit of the stomach. Let's do one more inhale. Stay for the exhale. And on your next inhale, carefully removing any props that you might have used. And slowly bringing yourself up to a seated position. And we'll come into whatever counter pose works for you in between each shape. I quite like to windscreen wiper. Left to right, right to left. And we're going to come into our next shape, which is called half butterfly. So bringing your left foot in towards your right thigh, and then your right leg coming out at an angle. Whatever angle works for you. Some people like it to be out almost straight. Other people like it to be like further out to the right, whatever works best for you. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be following forward um, using a box style, ideally, or a pillow, or a block as well, if you wish. So take a nice big inhale, flex those toes ever so slightly in your right foot back towards the shin, and then exhale, folding forward. And to come onto the forehead, you might need to use your hands, you might need to use your block. And wherever you are, Get comfortable in the pose. Remember there shouldn't be any pain or tension. Come to your edge and then back off ever so slightly. Remembering to breathe, inhale through the nose. And exhale through the nose. We're going to be using some positive affirmations today in our yoga session. They're a great way to either start our day, remind ourselves throughout the day. They help in terms of trying to set our mind into a positive space. And remember that we can't be positive all of the time. As lovely as that would be, we have to understand that Sometimes sadness or anger or frustration are things that will come to visit us. We have this big fixation on feeling the need to be happy all of the time. But we're humans. We need to understand sadness in order to understand what it feels like to truly be happy. I think something that when I'm working therapeutically with clients is quite useful to aim for instead is this idea of being peaceful, aiming for peacefulness, aiming for peace. You can still be happy, but peaceful. You can still be frustrated, but peaceful. It's just something that's a little bit more achievable than aiming to be happy all the time. Our first affirmation for today is I love myself for who I am. And as you inhale, you might like to repeat the inhale, I love myself 
And as you exhale, feel free to lie down. Inhale, I love myself. Exhale, feel free to lie down. One more inhale. Stay for the exhale. And on your next inhale, slowly coming up. We're going to do the same on the other side. So carefully, if you need to move your props, do so. Bringing that left leg out to the side. Right foot coming in towards the top part of the left thigh. <coughs> Inhale, heart and chest forward, leading with that heart first of all, and then exhale, folding forward. Maybe coming into the block, it might be different on this side. You might start with the block on the higher second. And over time, you might be able to move that block, or that foot, or that pillow, so that you can come closer to the ground. Remember, we're not aiming for a deep, 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 intense, difficult stretch. We're aiming to get to our edge and then backing off so it can be something that we can hold for three minutes. Tune back into your breath. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose. Repeating that affirmation, inhale, I love myself. Exhale, feel who I am. And there's a well-known saying that you may have heard. It's if you can't love yourself. How are you going to love somebody else? And this is where this affirmation really can touch a nerve. We spend so much time, some of us, focusing on either trying to make others happy and others love ourselves without giving the love and the care, the TLC to ourselves. You know, our own harsh is quitted sometimes. And we're all just trying to get through this life as best as we can. So start by being kind to yourself. Love yourself. Love the actions you choose, your behaviours, your values. And if you don't love your actions and your behaviours and your values, maybe it's about having a look at those and seeing what you can change. Changing for you, not for anybody else. Inhale, I love myself. Feel who I am. And the more that you authentically love yourself and do as you say you will, the more others will see that integrity that you have for yourself living by your values, believing in yourself in a humble way, and then you will begin to shine and 
radiate to others, attracting others into your life towards the key. We love you for being exactly who you are. And one more time, in and out, I love myself. For who I am. And then the next inhale, slowly coming up. Retrograde like this, everybody using your hands to crawl back. Maybe rolling shoulders one way, looking over to your left. And then the other way, looking over your right shoulder. Moving your props just out of the way a little bit here. <clears throat> We're going to come into dragon pose here, which is very similar to lizard pose in other styles of yoga. So coming into tabletop position, and then start to walk your hands a little bit further towards the top of the mat. Inhale and bring your right foot to the outside of your right hand. You might then Bring your left knee back ever so slightly. And this might be where you stay today. Some of you might like to come a little bit deeper into the pose and coming down onto your elbows. You can use a block if you wish, if that's comfortable and available to you, whatever works best for you. Closing down the eyes. Okay, where you exhale, maybe sinking a little bit deeper. Our affirmation for this shape, this pose, is I am strong and capable. Inhale, I am strong. And exhale, I am capable. And the word strong can sometimes be misinterpreted or misused. This doesn't mean that you need to always be mentally strong all of the time for yourself and for everyone. It's okay to get upset. It's okay to cry. Those are not signs of weakness. They're signs of strength. If you can use those emotions to understand yourself and better yourself and process those emotions in a positive way, Knowing that whatever comes your way, however difficult it may be, you will be able to face it, deal with it, own it, and use it to make you be a better person. Where are you sending your breath to? Is it going all the way to the pit of your stomach? And as you exhale, letting out any stagnant energy. Let's take one more inhale. And exhale. Your next inhale, bringing your palms to the mat, slowly coming out of the shape, bringing your right knee back to tabletop. <clears throat> Feel free to come back into a child's pose just for a brief couple of seconds. As we come into 
drag it on the other side. So bringing our left foot to the outside of our left hand, maybe bringing our right knee back ever so slightly. Maybe this is where you stay today. If not, if you'd like to come a little bit further down, feel free to fold down onto your elbows, closing down the arms. I am strong and I am capable. Know that you have everything you need with inside you to be capable enough to deal with what comes your way. For those of you who struggle with anxiety or depression or am depression, as they usually come as a package, one feeds the other, the other feeds that, and you can get yourself into a bit of a loop. Sometimes people have really intense highs and lows, we need to imagine them like waves. <clears throat> what we're aiming to do is make those waves less intense so that they're not extreme highs, they're not extreme lows, but they fluctuate and they move up and down like the ocean. We're aiming for them to be less intense, more majestic, a more natural ebb and flow. Strong. Excel and capable. And being capable and strong doesn't mean you need to be able to deal with and process things alone. Use your community, your friends, your family to talk things out if you feel safe, to share. And the idea of sharing helps to just lessen the intensity of that energy that comes to us. We share it out and talk it out. It helps us to not flood our minds with it, but hopefully over time talking it out releasing it is what therapy can do be great for, especially psychotherapy. One more inhale, I am strong. Exhale, and capable. Beautiful, well done. On your next inhale, slowly coming out of the shape. Coming up onto your hands first. Bringing the left knee back to tabletop. And let's come in just to feel a couple of rounds of a slow cat cow, or whatever counter pose you would like to do. Coming into cow, circling your stomach in towards the navel. And then inhale into cow. Exhale into cow. And then when you're ready, coming to sit. Bringing your legs out nice and wide. We're going to be coming into dragonfly pose here. So if you've got your bolster or your pillow, it's a good idea to put this in between you. Flexing those toes back towards your shin ever so slightly, not too intense. We're going to be folding forward with our heart. Again, maybe using a block as you come forward. So maybe rest your forehead down on the mat, on the block or the bolster, palms facing up. And if you notice, you'll notice my knees have come up off the mat ever so slightly. That's absolutely fine. 
and then the Wiccan, we got deepening and lengthening the connective tissue, the fascia, over time, over the three minutes they will stretch and lengthen and release, you might be able to go deeper. Maybe sink a little bit deeper with the exhale. Remember aiming for stillness here. And our next affirmation is how I feel matters. How I feel matters. Sometimes we don't tap into how we're really feeling. And we've got other people's feelings ahead of our own without attending to our issues, our feelings. Working on yourself or being open to doing the work on yourself is going to allow you to help others. Acknowledging and honouring the feelings that are coming up for you. It's going to help you process them better. So many times when I'm working therapeutically with clients, I'll ask them how they're feeling. And so many times they'll tell me what they're thinking. You might know the difference between a thought and a feeling, which means they get stuck in their head with the thought, rather than tapping into the feeling that they're actually feeling in their bodies. I highly recommend just typing and searching for something called the feelings wheel online. It's a really great tool to be able to choose a feeling that we're feeling if we're struggling to decipher between a thought and a feeling. The more we tap into our body, our body is wise. It knows what it needs. The mind can get infected with so many different things these days, especially with the use of social media, the news. Really think about what sort of information you are digesting. Is it valid? Is it reliable? Is it trustworthy? Is it something that makes you feel good in your day? Notice what things you do in your day that make you feel good. But more importantly, notice the things that you do that don't make you feel good. That way you can try to limit them as much as possible. Because how you feel matters. Stay for the exhale. And on your next inhale, slowly coming up. Again, vertebrae by vertebrae. Ideally with eyes closed, but completely up to you. Maybe rolling shoulders back one way. And then the other. Maybe giving yourself a little smile. Carefully moving any of your props out of the way. We're going to come into belting half pose. So very similar to extended puppy in other yoga practices. 
coming into a tabletop position here, so hand underneath shoulders, knees underneath hips, and then start walking your hands out in front, bringing your heart down to the mat, keeping your hips above your knees, and then maybe bringing your heart down, or your chin, or your forehead down to the mat. Our positive affirmation for this show is I choose to be in healthy relationships. I choose to be in healthy relationships. This can be a relationship you have with yourself place to start. Do you enjoy being with the person you are? Are you honest to yourself? And then start to assess the relationships around you. Do they make you feel safe? That's the big first question to ask. Do you feel judged? Do you feel anxious? Or do you feel heard, listened to? Do you feel lifted up when you're feeling down? Do you feel congratulated when you've done something you're proud of? Some relationships are difficult to let go of or work on. Sometimes we feel as though we're stuck in a toxic relationship. Whether or not that's with friends, family or a loved one. But we all have a right to be in healthy relationships with the people around us. Learning what your boundaries are what you will accept and what you won't accept. And sharing these with the people you love in your life. It's a really great way to help protect yourself. I choose to be in healthy relationships. One more inhale. Stay for the exhale. And then slowly, ever so slightly, coming out of the pose. Let's come into another counter pose, maybe your cat cow again. Inhale, into cow. Exhale, into cow. Inhale into cow. Exhale into cow. And we're going to be coming into sleeping swan, which is very similar to king pigeon. You can feel free to use a bolster if you wish. It's quite nice to be able to relax your forehead or your ear on. If you are coming into sleeping swan, what I'd like you to do is, is bring your right knee towards your right wrist. And we're kind of usually aiming to have this leg parallel to the front of the mat, but don't worry too much about it in this pose because we want to be nice and relaxed. Flexing those right toes back towards the right shin, maybe walking 
your left foot back ever so slightly. Inhale your heart and chest proud, maybe a little smile. And then exhale, folding forward. Coming to rest on that bolster. Either having your forehead or your chin on that bolster. Maybe taking your left ear to the mat, uh, bolster to rest on. Our affirmation for this pose, this shape, is I choose to forgive and let go of anger. Inhale, I choose to forgive and let go of anger. The more that we hold on to negative experiences, the more that they manifest in our minds and our bodies, and then impact our relationship either with that person or with other people in our future based on that last interaction or that experience you've had. Whilst we have to honour when something negative has happened, we have that choice as to whether we hold on to it or to forgive and let it go. When we feel like we've been wronged by someone else, we like to blame them for how we feel about that. But all we're doing, if we're holding on to something and not forgiving, and letting go of anger is we're only hurting ourselves. The more that we make that conscious choice to forgive and let go of anger, the more that we can be at peace in our own minds. Maybe notice in this pose, every time you exhale, maybe you sink a little bit deeper to the mat and let go. One more inhale on this side. Stay for the exhale. And then slowly bringing yourself up onto your hands. Maybe using your left foot to help push you up a little bit to bring that right knee back. Coming back into our tabletop position before we come into the sleeping swan on the other side. Bringing our left knee to our left wrist, maybe walking that right foot back, flexing those left toes back towards the shin. Inhale, our heart and chest proud, maybe bringing so that our right hip comes very close to the mat, if not all the way down. And then exhale, folding forward. Coming onto our chin, onto our forehead, or onto our right hip. Again, closing down the arms. Nice big inhale. And nice long exhale. choose to forgive and let go of anger. Now 
and there are things in that too. Feeling and emotion. We're all allowed to feel. It's what we do with that anger and how we respond with that anger that's going to help us either to let it go or to work with it constructively, consciously, authentically. To help move us forward. Just remember the longer that we hold on to that anger, the more of the negative emotions we'll experience, the more of the negative vibration and frequency we're going to give off is going to be apparent to others. How we behave and how we respond to our feelings really does have an impact on those people around us, as well as ourselves. If you can't let go of anger, or get easily angered, never forgiving. You create that energy around you that others sense and see. And what you could be doing is blocking someone or something so beautiful and wonderful into your life. The more that we try to, you might have heard the term, raise your vibration. And essentially what that means is the more that we try to focus and share and embody the positive emotions that we can feel, the more that we're going to be welcoming in other positivity. We're going to attract other people, other souls who are aiming to be positive. So have a think about the vibrational frequency you might be giving off sometimes, or most of the time, maybe. And have a think about where you might be able to let go of some things or change some things. Again, we're not always aiming to be positive 100% of the time. But we want to be resilient and open to bouncing back from those negative emotions when they do arise. What more is there? And exhale. On your next inhale, slowly coming up. And coming into tabletop position. I'm going to come into one of my favourite poses, which is called broken wing. So you come into lie down on the mat. This can be quite an intense pose, so only go as far as you would like to today. Bringing your arms into the goal posts so that your elbows are in line with your shins. Bringing your chin or your forehead down to the mat, ideally your chin. And what I'd like you to do is, is bring your left hand almost like to a spider, bringing your left elbow up, bringing your right ear to the mat. And then you're going to turn over, bringing your left knee up. And it might stay up here, or it might come all the way down to the mat. And what we're doing here is you should feel this lovely stretch in your chest on the right hand side. Closing down the eyes if that's available to you. 
Inhaling through the nose. Exhaling through the nose. Another affirmation for this shape. Is I choose things that are good for my mind, body and soul. I choose things that are good for my mind, body and soul. What we do in terms of our thinking, our mind affects our body, and then that in turn also affects our soul, how we feel about ourselves in this world, what we give out to the world, where we want to go, and the same with our body. Whatever we do with our body whether or not it's physical exercise or whether it is the food that we eat, the rest that we get or don't get, that has an impact on our mind and also on our soul. And again, yeah, you guessed it, whatever we do to feed our soul, the things that we want to do that help us align with our values, feel connected to ourselves and to those around us or to something higher. It affects how we feel in our minds <laughs> and our bodies. So being able to choose to do things that are good for our mind, our body and soul can help us to realign And know that they all have an impact on each other. One more inhale. Stay for the exhale. And then slowly coming out, bringing your chin back to the mat. Bringing your left hand and arm back to goal post. Wiggling your hips left to right, right to left. Let's do the same on the other side. Bring your left ear to the mat. Right hand comes up onto the fingers. And then turning over, opening up to the right. Maybe bringing that right foot to the mat. Opening up that chest. And that shoulder. I choose things that are good for my mind, body and soul. One of our retreats that we have here at Rolling Hills Retreat is called the Mind, Body and Soul Retreat. And we look at things that we're doing that are good or not so good for our mind, same for our body, and same for our soul. There's actually a fourth one, and that is our environment, where we live, work, play. This has a massive impact on our mind, body, and soul as well. Something to think about. Do we feel safe? Do we feel comfortable in our environment, whether that's home or work, or when we're out with friends? This can have a huge impact on our mind, body, and soul. Are you able to get out in nature? 
regularly, moving it back to a small part. choosing to stay in Shavasana or if you're coming out ever so slightly start to slowly wiggle your feet your toes your fingers and then turning over onto whichever side feels comfortable for you today maybe using your hands your bicep as a pillow And keeping the eyes closed, slowly coming to a seated position. Bringing hands into prayer if that's in your practice, or hands on your knees. Take a nice big inhale and a sigh through the mouth. 
Try to give yourself a little smile. Know that you've chosen something really beautiful for your mind, body and soul just now. You can come to this space and do this anytime you wish. You've got what, it, what you need inside of you to help you through. Tap into your intuition, tap into your soul. session and if there's any questions comments or feedback or requests please feel free to get in touch i'm chris um, and you can get in touch at instagram on instagram at rolling hills retreats or on www.sydneycouncillor.org take care of yourselves and have a beautiful day